Now, Nanny, this cookie is gluten-free. Is what? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Vaughn. I've got a problem. I wasn't able to find regular flour at the store and I really want to make chocolate chip cookies. My body is like 97% cookie by this point. I figured I would call my good friend and pastry chef extraordinaire, Erin Jean McDowell. She is a queen in uh, every sense of the word. She's really been a go-to for me for like, what can I substitute where? Erin was able to take the iconic New York Times chocolate chip cookie and make it more accessible for people, which is great. Let's get on the phone and call Aaron and get bacon. Are we gonna have more cookies today? Mom's a proud Gryffindor. It's very cute. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so good, how are you? I'm feeling particularly good today because I'm not wearing pajamas. This was really the first time I've ever been asked to develop a recipe based on somebody else's recipe. And so the real challenge was trying to make sure that these stood up to the main thing. This one was a doozy. I started out with something like eight different flowers. We're talking about many dozens of cookies. Walking down the street, like tossing cookies in the air, like. I can definitely attest that you do not have to be gluten-free to appreciate these cookies. But if you are gluten-free, you're going to appreciate them even more because you can't just run to the store and grab a chocolate chip cookie as easily. Everyone, you get a cookie and you get a cookie and they're gluten-free. And for me, the number one thing about almond flour is it's the easiest to find of a lot of alternative flours because if you can't find it in the store, you can make it yourself with almonds. You wouldn't necessarily know that it had nuts without me telling you. I was pleasantly surprised because all the taste testers liked it the best of some that I gave them. So then I was like, okay, we're on to something. And truly, I like it this way because it feels like the exciting days of radio. <laughs> I can't see what's going on down below. It's perfect. Oh, wait, yeah. I could be wearing absolutely no pants right now. You, yeah. you would never know. <laughs> that isn't what I meant by down below. I just meant the bowl. Oh. It's at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> but yeah, so that too um, is your butter at room temperature. Oh, Aaron. Based on your dewy skin, I assume it is room temperature because it's very warm there. Well, and I wanted to give one little tidbit for people okay. who always forget to soften the butter. I put the whole stick into the microwave still in its wrapper. You microwave it for 10 seconds and then you rotate it on the other side and do five to 10 seconds more and it'll be perfectly room temp. Oh, chef's kiss. Great, creaming. I usually start at a lower speed just to kind of get things combined, but eventually you're gonna to wanna to raise it up to more of a medium speed to really get that aeration. When my husband and I moved in together, that's how we knew we were meant to be together because we had the same color stand mixer. That's really the end. cute. <laughs> just kidding. I fully expect you to edit out the majority of my nerdery, but I appreciate you indulging me. <laughs> yep, I think it looks great. And we're already okay. halfway home, friend. Wow, this is wild. I mean, this recipe comes together uh, be quickly. As a good chocolate chip cookie recipe should, because right. you want to get from zero to cookie like as quickly as possible. Amen. <laughs> Do you have your chocolate like all ready to go? Like, is uh, it chopped? That is a good question, and um, no. I started to take it out of the foil, and as you can see, I, not uh, <laughs> all a of snack. it made it, yeah. <laughs> When I call for chopped chocolate, they'll say, can you use chocolate chips? And the answer is you usually can use chocolate chips almost anywhere that chopped chocolate is called for. The main difference is that chocolate chips have these stabilizers in them that'll help them keep their chip shape after baking. The main reason that I think chopped chocolate is the best is that you get these uneven chocolate pockets. It kind of also makes for a cragglier cookie, which is kind of, for me, one of the more desirable traits of chocolate chip cookies in particular. It's visible puddles mm. of chocolate on the surface of the cookie and on the inside. Puddles of chocolate, wow. <laughs> My band name. Hi, sweet boy. He's like, you woke me up from a nap. What am I uh, Oh yeah, there uh, it is. Go ahead and put the dry ingredients in and mix okay. them until they're combined. If you have like a clean kitchen towel around, when you go to turn on the mixer, you can drape it over the mixer. Instead of going all over your counter and all over the mixer, it'll kind of get trapped and go right back into the bowl. Kitchen towel with macarons on it. How cute. Oh! Oh, adorable. Another okay. appropriate treat if you can't find flour, because guess what they're made with? 
almond flour. We'll just go ahead and add your chocolate and mix it until it's, you know, uniformly combined as well. And then we're we ready to scoop. We're ready to scoop. Show me thine scoop. Perfect. That's the one. Yep. And then that's exactly what I do. I scrape it along the edge, but I okay. also don't care if there's some little like nubbins around the edge. Yeah. Like that, because I think that that makes again for craggly cookies. Yeah. David describes it as the size of generous golf balls because they are. Uh, they're like, it's a racket ball. That's how I would yeah. describe it. But generous golf ball is also a good band name. <laughs> Very good. I found that giving these cookies a little bit of a help so that they don't stay mounded, it just helps them spread a little more uniformly. Just pressing them down a smidge. And they look almost like small little hamburger patties, kind of. That should be exactly what they look like. Yes, just like that. I can't remember when it was originally published, but it's definitely one of the earlier recipes that had, um, you know, such a generous quantity of the flaky salt. And that's another great reason to leave the chocolate in bigger pieces because there's nothing like a pool of melty chocolate that is nicely salted. Oh, the tiny spatula. Oh it, it, it decided to surprise you. They've been in for 20 minutes. <gasps> They're beautiful! I'm so excited. They look big and gorgeous. Cookieing it up. I made some for this occasion. Because <laughs> oh, so I was so gonna weird. get jealous if you were making it. I was gonna get jealous. I needed a cookie too. The sad part, how long do we have to wait for them to cool? Well, that completely depends. If you're fine eating them with a spoon, you can start right now. I'm not above it. Cheers! Cheers. I'm bit already. <laughs> They're so good, right? This is so good. Nanny. Love Nanny. I've got my friend Aaron here, and we just baked Hi, some Nanny. cookies. Oh my. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> Very good. It was like actually a lot of fun to bake, like, qua like bake. Quasi bake? Metaphysically bake, maybe? Actually, the thing that like makes me a little emotional almost daily is that in this time when I can't really see people, they're making my recipes, and then I feel like I am in their kitchen. Like, I do feel like I was in your kitchen with you. And I mean, I was, because I was in a little box. A warm cookie is as close as we can get to a virtual hug right now. So, oh. one more cookie cheers. Nanny is the front man, she's the band manager, she's designing the t-shirts, she's supplying the after party. 